Okay, back into the mining thing. So I've looked at, you know, accounts, passwords and that sort of stuff. And one of the fundamental pillars of, I suppose, the internet and IT is something known as encryption. <clears throat> and there's hundreds of um, possible algorithms out there. Um, let's see, F3. Level 40, I want to get down to 11 to 13, strangely enough. So let's go that way. Oh, I need to... Ah, no, don't jump down there. That would be bad. Almost did it feel like my toes on the edge of the cliff. Um, all right, so here I need something more than just that. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight should be enough because that generates 32 wood. Then split that in half. That generates 64 of those. Stack with that, and that gives me far more torches than I'll ever reasonably need. And that's doing its thing. And I probably should actually just stash this stuff somewhere. So, dish, dish. Uh, drop those, that, and that. I don't need to carry that much. Although I might want to do probably good things. So, yeah, I was rabbiting on about something. I forgot what it is now. Um, yeah, encryption. So, encryption is one of these cornerstones of the internet. Basically, one step at a time. Um, it allows for the um, obscuring of data and you know it was the thing that made World War II what it is it was one of those underpinning technologies and without encryption a lot of stuff would not have happened um, so yeah you can look up the Enigma codes and all that kind of stuff it's all um, critically important to that era So somehow I've got to get around this. Okay, so yeah, Enigma was basically the German code. It was designed to conceal the messages. It worked really well. It and look, there's so much, so many resources out there about this thing that it really doesn't seem worth me talking about it because it is one of those, I suppose, fundamental stories from World War Two. Uh, Alan Turing, who was one of the founders of computer science uh, with basically his ideas around the Turing machine and a few other bits and pieces as well, um, basically created the fundamentals of computing. Ah, oh, that's where it goes under. Okay, so go down this way as well, drop one in there and this, oh no, is it a dead end? Yes, it is. Good. All right, uh, where is the entrance? So, yeah, Turing is responsible for so much um, of how we understand computing. He came up with all the ideas in terms of basically how machines should work. Uh, one of his most famous things is, in fact, the Turing test, which is, at its fundamental, is if a computer can be considered to have... Um, not thought, because he thought that was a really stupid question, but to be considered intelligent, well, not quite intelligent, but have the capacity to fool a human being. And this then becomes the fundamental of the Turing test. And there's been bots created on the internet that do this. So, and the test was basically just that. Can a machine fool a human into thinking that the human think, make the human think that the machine is actually an intelligent agent you know something somebody something somebody can talk to to reach you know to have reasonable conversations and there's a number of chatter bots that do that but i've wandered completely off the topic of this sort of stuff and i can probably get to this back to this later um but so in turing basically the germans created what oh that's a bad place to fall um created this wonderful code that hid all their messages and made it really impossible for the allied forces to um, to basically be able to deal with it. So Turing and a bunch of other scientists, scientists uh, working at Bletchley Park in the UK came up with a solution. And that solution was um, the Colossus machine. And basically what it did is it ran through every possible combination of, 
codes because they knew it wasn't a completely a complete unknown, but just a partial unknown. So what they did is then they, but off that I suppose short list of possible keys to decipher those messages, they then are able to work out. Oh, this goes somewhere. Um, work out what the encrypted message was. The, the big challenge for them is the codes get changed every single day. So they had 24 hours to break the code and make something useful out of it because in wartime, yesterday's messages are kind of not useful, you know? So you need to be able to have current information. And if you watch um, the imitation game, it is a great example of, it gives you a clear example of basically how the process worked and that's sort of, hey, redstone, cool. And some random off bit there, we might have to build a bridge. Um, yeah, so as, a, as a, I suppose a fundamental step, and a torch in here so I don't lose it. Um, okay, that's gonna have to become something a little more. Um, yeah, so in terms of, I suppose, in cryptography and encryption, this is a fundamental story into the backbone of the internet and how it works. And the first step, of course, in this process is understanding what encryption does for you, even if you don't really know how it works. But if you have to suffer through my classes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up covering basically simple encryption when we get to the programming stuff that we're doing and we haven't done that yet but we'll get there uh, next axe this is an axe it's double-headed pointed axe pointy axe trust me i know what i'm doing tm yeah so encryption is one of these fundamental tool sets that um it's really good to have an understanding of as an it professional if you don't understand the maths behind it, that doesn't matter. The important part is understanding where it gets used, why you should use it, and all that kind of information, because that is the fundamental of, yeah, I thought that'd be the case. Um, more lava. Um, yeah, that's the fundamental of basically working in IT and that sort of stuff. Um, this is not gonna work for me, I don't think. Um, yeah. So, I think I've covered the basics of encryption. I don't know. Um, but basically, it's a way of encoding messages so you don't understand the contents. Um, and there are a number of basic um, algorithms. Simon Singh has this wonderful book uh, called The Code Book, which goes through the history of code. Um, cryptography, that is. Uh, the two get used interchangeably thanks to computer science people going, yeah, it's all code. Um, but yeah, anyhow, um, now what level am I at? 12, so perfect. And the live will be on the base of 13. Okay, so we'll go this way. Yeah, um, so the first, there are, there are two basic forms when things are encoded. The first is called substitution, where one thing is swapped for another thing. So the example of this is decoder rings. You take, say, a standard letter sequence and swap each letter out for something, another letter. So A could be swapped for B, B for C, and so on and so forth. And that gives you, whoops, I don't want to be standing in that when that comes flying through. Uh, need some cobble. Yeah, so as a result, No, nope, that's not working for me. Um, yeah, so as a result, the message can't be read. Now, the standard attack for this sort of, I suppose, thing is that you have lava flowing everywhere. Basically, what you end up with is you use the properties of the English language choosing the most commonest letter and that sort of stuff to work out 
how that message is encoded. And once you work out how it's encoded, you can then actually decipher it. And it's a fairly trivial exercise and can be done by hand. Um, trust me, I've done it. Um, yeah, living a little dangerously there. I don't want to burst into flame because I don't have a bucket of water with me. Standard mining equipment 101. I might have to go topside and get some. So, yeah, it's... And the other one is a translation cipher. So you move the thing from one position to the next position. I'm going to go topside and get this bucket because I think it's dumb of me. Wandering around here, doing all this without the appropriate resources. Yeah, bounce, 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 bounce up the hill. Um, I also need food as well. Take that with me, take that with me, leave those down here. Uh, dump that. Yeah, that'll be useful down here. That can stay. I've got plenty up top side. Cool. All right. Yeah. So the translation cipher is basically moving the position of the letters. So swapping every letter pair. So instead of the word spelling, I'll say four letter word, um, fish. Instead of going F I S H, it would be I F H S, which can initially looks like gibberish. But when you actually go through the process of deciphering, and of course it's dark outside, so that sort of kiboshes that idea. Um, so as you go through and do that, it then makes it harder to understand what that's about. Those two simple operations are pretty much how everything is encoded these days. So if you look at any form of cryptography, it applies those two techniques you know, a lot to then create what you need. Uh, um, might as well just spend this time working on my buckets and stuff. I have is bucket. It is a nice bucket. And for shearing sheer sheep. Um, what else do I need? Probably some booties. Or do I put some pants? Pants be okay. And maybe a bit of an armor. Um, yeah, so... Those two techniques become important because I need a better skin. This is not me. Shouldn't pick my nose either. Um, yeah, so, and I need to get food, so I'm going to have to stay here until it gets to sunlight. Or I could cheat. No, no time set zero. Bugger. Um, yeah, so, wandering off topic again, as always. Those two basic ideas get mashed together back and forth to really encode stuff. And this is what SS. H is, this is what HTTPS is. These are all secure forms of encoded messages. Strangely enough, your emails are not encoded, your text messages are not encoded, there's a lot of stuff that is not. So if you want to get into encryption and encoding, I strongly recommend it because any business that wants to make sure their data is secure will want it encrypted. And in, this encryption can be set up in a couple of ways. One is you just encrypt a file. And so it's just like you apply it to the file and it, it's encrypted. It becomes gibberish. And if you don't have the right key, you can't view the file. The other is, of course, is a way of transmitting that message. So you open up a, a, a communication channel. You both share the same key so that the message on your computer gets encoded, sent to them. They get it on their end. They decode it. They can read it. And key exchange is a whole different topic, but I'll get there at a later date. So I'm going to, whoops, try looking at the floor for a bit. And I'm going to stop there before moving on.